Hello, hello. We are here with Jag Head Couture doing a live video for you. A little bit of demonstration right now on. Uh... What's up, everybody? Hi. So, what are we doing here, Jag? We're doing some freehand creative balayage painting um, on a competition mannequin here. This is a technique I really like to use and I wanted to open up today just by showing you some uh, freehand, artistic, creative painting, you know, because we're artists and um, it's a great opportunity just to break some rules, have some fun and uh, have some fun with color. So I'm just going to keep painting and um, yeah, we'll talk about it. Perfect. So Jag, um, tell me a little bit about you and you know, your background, where you're from, how this started. Well, I was actually born into the hair industry. Both of my parents are hairstylists, and I uh, grew up going to hair shows and um, just being exposed. I was like a little hair brat, so I was running around hair shows, getting my hair colored, watching demos, competitions, all of that stuff. So I was like, spent a lot of time in the salon as a kid, and um, I actually didn't start hair until I was 25, but I've always been around it my whole life. Perfect. So, what would you say? inspires you the most? Or maybe one of your uh, first kind of realizations as where you wanted to get into? You know, I always, uh, I didn't really realize I was artistic until I was about 18. And so once I realized I was artistic, I really just wanted to um, try anything I could. You know, I went to art school and um, studied 2D, 3D design, studied advertising design. I just wanted to really feel out some artistic abilities. And it wasn't until after those things that I thought that maybe I would give hair a try like my parents and see what happens. And so ever since I started hair, I pretty much uh, haven't stopped, dug in and really tried to uh, express myself the best way I could with it and uh, try all different things, you know? Like um, my Naha collection is really like bold and pop culture and creative and I'm using like new materials and then I, I was in the competition world for a really long time so we do like you know really um, uh, technical cuts and bold colors and those are all timed so there's a lot of prep and planning so I've just kind of been you know feeling my way around the industry and just trying to enjoy it and love it and just keep going you know just keep doing stuff. Perfect. So let's talk a little bit about that Naha collection then. Um, maybe even start with the inspiration from your, your uh, latest submissions and your... Well, I'm newer to the photography competition world, so I'm really like, you know, for the Naha Awards, an awards program that I've always admired and one day said to myself that I was going to end up there, hopefully. Um, I really wanted to show something special. I wanted to, um, I don't know, feel like I brought something new to the table. Feel like I opened up somebody's mind to the possibilities of what hair can do. So I really wanted to use hair in different ways and uh, see if I could convey a feeling or a message um, in, in those techniques. So we, we, we put hair on faces, we relieved it off the face and created imagery that way. Um, we accessorized with hair. We work with texture, and I say we because we have a creative team, but um, yeah, I just really wanted to stand out, and uh, that collection kind of made itself. It was it definitely just, uh, once it started, really built itself, and so it was a, it was a pleasure to make, and, it, and the results came out really, really well. That's awesome. Yeah. So let's talk about that team that you mentioned a little bit. How do you go about choosing your team members or... Um, figuring out what that entails? Well, teamwork is like really, really key and really important because I believe that um, everybody's position is equally important. And so finding the right team is a big job and it's a job in itself because uh, you really see the results of a strong team um, when, when all the pieces fit together. So everybody's equally important and um, we were all just there to create beautiful work that day. So the energy on set was really good. So, you know, when selecting the team, I, I met with everybody, we talked about the project, there was like lots of dialogue back and forth. And, you know, we just had a lot of clear communication to make sure that, uh, you know, on, on shoot day that we knew what we were doing and um, we were prepared for any bumps in the road. Perfect. 
So when there are some um, bumps in the road or anything like that, how do you go about um, coming through and just persevering in, in, in that in general and in hairstyling as well? Well, being able to adapt and pivoting is definitely uh, a skill. We had, we had bumps in the road that day. We had a lot of things go wrong, um, but not really wrong, but a lot of things that asked us to change how we were going to do it. Uh, we had a couple of uh, models not show up, so we had to get models right away, and we did, thank God. Um, we had, you know, uh, timing issues, you know, we wanted to make sure we were on time. Um, but really the day was pretty smooth, comparatively, but... You know, we, those, those things can shift today, and we were all positive, and we just looked forward to making beautiful art, and, and we did, you know? So uh, the team was so great. It was a wonderful team to work with. Perfect. So from submission, or I guess starting and submitting and to now becoming a nominee, what has your experience been so far with the Nahas? Uh, I think that this has been a really great experience. Um, the Naha Awards, like ever since I submitted, have like communicated uh, so well with me. I've had opportunities to do really great interviews um, and and ex celebrate my collection. You know, like the interviews ask you to ask you a lot about yourself, and so I learned a lot about myself in writing the responses. You know, you really have to sit down and. And I wanted to answer them very, very clear and very direct, and um, and let people know how I felt as an artist. Uh, there's just been so much engagement with the Naha process that you know whatever the outcome is when I get to the Naha Awards, I'm I'm feeling very fulfilled by the experience. And I think that if there's anybody out there who wants to try the Naha Awards or you know put a collection together, that you really should and you should go for it because. It's just been a pleasure and so cool to like be doing an interview for the Hair Nerds today and yes. do interviews and get stoked for Vegas and um, just have this experience I think is enriching my life, enriching my services behind the chair, getting people around me really excited and uh, yeah, it's just like, I mean, how could you not want to do something like this? It's just awesome. That's so great. So let's, what about some of your inspirations? Like even in general, just uh, what are some of the things that you like to see and I really, take from? you know, I definitely have to say that I appreciate my colleagues and, and all competitive work out there because I know, you know, what we go through to create that imagery. So all of my colleagues really inspire me um, when I see everybody else's work. So I just, you know, I really appreciate them for that because we need to lift each other and support each other and uh, celebrate the beauty of what we do. Uh, but also like theater, I, I dance, so I take dance classes, I love music and fashion. And uh, it's just, you know, art and is something I realized that just lives inside of me. And, and um, I'm taking uh, inf inspiration from everything, conversations, um, people watching, you know, it, it's just all there and I'm so thrilled to express it in my work. Perfect. Um, would you like to talk a little bit about uh, the inspiration behind what you're doing right now? Well, like I said, you know, I just really want to like show off some freeform color. We're working with primary colors today, which I thought would be kind of cool uh, because obviously primaries overlap and give us our secondaries and et cetera, et cetera. So I thought it'd be cool just to do a primary demo today um, with some freehand painting because like I said, it's fun to freehand paint. It's like, you know, it, it opens you up. And I also find that painting um, freehand, um, actually I'm using Illumin Goldwell today. And I like the lumen because it has a little bit of transparency um, when, when you're painting with it. So the freehand is going to give me a really soft blend of the colors. So in some areas, I'll, I'll have heavy lines of color. I'll overlap. I'll do two coats. In some areas, I'll keep that coat off, just maybe, you know, one coat. And then we'll overlap over to, uh, like, uh, the red over the yellow and the red over the blue and we're just going to have a little play with that. I've also had a little bit of black here too, then I'm going to go in and dirty it up with a little bit and see if we can't get more dimension out of this front panel. Perfect. And um, let's talk a little bit about the sectioning that you've got going on here. 
So it's uh, on etiquette. Yeah. Yeah. So it's exciting. I do like the best way to freehand paint is to make sure you have full control over your canvas. So what I like to do is keep my front panel really long and tie it off on the bottom to keep it nice and tight and then a perimeter of clips just to keep that hair down. I have used a little bit of hairspray, just a very light top coat of hairspray, just to keep the hair down um, and like I said, for full control. Um, sectioning, there's an undercut here, it's a bob. Um, and then after we take this down, we're just going to put a nice little cut in it and um, show off the beautiful color. Perfect, so exciting. It is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> love love so this photo here is the uh the inspiration this is one of your looks here yeah this this painting technique i used for um for a collection i did um a couple years ago and i haven't really been able to uh show this technique off yet and i really like since balayage is such a big deal and it, it's fun to do in the salon i thought freehand painting um, some like pop colors and some really, you know, uh, like cool, um, strong colors would be really cool for people to see, to say that, hey, we can freehand paint some other things too, you know, um, and, uh, and just have some fun with it, really. Yes, perfect. And just tapping in a little bit of black here, just to kind of murky it out a little bit to make those bright colors pop even more. Give some dimension to the hair. So, um, Jake, where do you see yourself in five years? Let's talk a little bit about, about maybe some inspirations or some ideas or what you're leaning towards yeah, in the future. I mean, like I said, I'm kind of one of those guys who likes to try new things and um, really stay open to this industry and what the industry can bring to me. Um, I'm super, super creative, so I have like high ambitions of working with designers for fashion weeks on creative collections, uh, collaborating with muses. I have a, a couple of amazing muses that I like to work with that really pull some strong imagery out of me. And um, I'd like to really stay on that path, you know, stay behind the chair, working with my clients, but also really focus in on, on trying new things in the fashion world and, and you know, with, um, you know, people who just want to create with me. I'm always open to collaboration and uh, I can't wait to do some traveling and show off my work. And this year I think I'm, um, I think I'm going to New York Fashion Week to, to dress somebody and, and that's going to be really exciting. So who knows what can happen even over the next year. But in the next five years, you know, I hope to do more of this. This is my first Instagram or Facebook video. And uh, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good right now. So, oh, you're looking pretty good. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. So yeah, I hope to do more and get used to this and more comfortable and uh, talking and hanging out with my my colleagues and my peers. You know, I welcome any questions. If you guys ever have questions for me, you can send me questions on Instagram or Facebook. Yeah. Uh, Instagram is Jag Head Couture and Facebook is Jag Musa. Perfect. Yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the messages right now. I can read them out and Jag will be happy to answer them for you. So, um, we can do that a little bit. This is so exciting. So I've known Jag. This is a little bit about me here behind the camera. Hi! I'm, um... Yeah, I met Jag at the first salon I ever worked at yeah, yeah. downtown in Calgary. He came in with his beautiful smile and I just, uh, just knew this guy's going to do something big. And he's been winning all these awards and all these, uh, this art that he's creating is really inspiring for me too. So I want to send that out to you, Jag. Thanks, Kayla. <laughs> That's so cool, man. I'm so happy you're here to help me today. Yes, me too. And thank you so much, Hair Nerds, for asking me to do this. Um, it's just an honor, and you know, I feel like it's pushing me out of my comfort zone a little bit, which I like. And I, I heard this quote. I was nervous this morning, so I heard this quote. And the quote was, um, being nervous is just creative energy waiting to get out. So that's the mantra that I really want to like, you know, take in and, and work, because I get nervous a lot just because I care about what I do. But now that, I've, now that I heard this mantra that, yeah, it's just creative energy, so I'm just going to ride with it 
and uh, keep making some stuff. You know? Yes, I love that. Yeah. Hi, Janice. Janice is here. Janice Marie. She's saying I love it. Hey, she's, Janice Goss. How you doing? She's uh, throwing up hearts. Thanks, girl. Nice. Yeah, she's in Vancouver right now. All right, so with this color technique, we're just going to let this sit now um, and process. Uh, I am going in for a shorter bang on this, so we are going to leave a little bit of those white ends out just to have a nice kind of like a nice light finish to this hard color technique. And then we've got a nice black panel underneath that we're going to base it out with and have a nice black line there. So I'm just going to set that down and um, answer some more questions and let Kayla do her thing with me. Mm -hmm. Ooh, la la. Ooh la la. Perfect. Well, Jag, I'm so excited that you're here. Um, yeah, like I've said, you've always been an inspiration to me. So I'm just going to ask you uh, a couple more things, maybe about um, kind of more more the education that you have. You said you've you've dug into different outlets of your education. So maybe we can talk a little I bit about little that. Bit. Yeah, yeah, I think I think a lot of my approach to hairdressing is because of some of my education. Uh, right after high school, I went to 2D, 3D design, so I studied design and the design principles. And then uh, in that course, it was awesome. I got to get my hands dirty and build three-dimensional structures and see, um, see art in, in, with three-dimensional eyes with the design principles. And then after that course, I went to advertising school and did advertising design. So we also learned the design principles there. But we, um, I also learned about concept and branding and, and, and uh, things that you would need to be successful in the advertising world. After that, I became a commercial booking agent at a model and promotions agency. And uh, there, I ended up doing a couple of photo shoots with the girls. And uh, so I built another skill where I just got my kind of feet wet with photo photography and casting and models. and then. Um, I realized that maybe I should try hair, hair, hair design because I wasn't always 100 with the hair on set and I was always like that guy who was like, the hair's not right, the hair's not right, the hair's not right. And I was like, okay, maybe I should just do this. <laughs> you should just make it right. I should just make it right. Yes. Yeah. So um, I like, you know, I quit all my jobs and I went to an open call uh, at a beta in Toronto and they hired me immediately for their flagship store at Chevello Salons in Yorkville. And uh, from there, I pretty much never looked back. I just, I worked so hard. We worked 60 hour weeks in that salon as apprentices. They trained us really, really well. And before I knew it, I was, you know, ready to write my license and ready to get going. And then ever since I was in, you know, finished that apprentice program, I started competitions and competition work. And, Put myself under a lot of pressure to, you know, learn how to perform and learn how to say what I want to say with my artwork. And I think that that's, that was like really invaluable for me, really valuable because um, to be able to convey a message through your work is what an artist dreams about. And so to be recognized with the Nahas and some other competition stuff that I've been done has been really awesome because it does mean that my work is like speaking to people. Yes, I love that. And so with going about um, choosing models, how, how would you recommend or what kind of advice would you have for anybody that is wanting to get into this but having trouble with that? Yeah, models are like, I mean, I love model selection. I think it's like just amazing. Um, there's so many things to take into consideration when choosing models. You know, it's like... The, it, depending on what project you're doing, definitely the model needs to suit what you're up to. So, um, for the Naha Awards, for that collection, because we were working with materials that were like covering the face, uh, we really needed girls that were going to be okay with that. We're still going to be able to exude confidence um, with working with materials that were that were covering them. Um, so we look for personality. And, and beautiful, you know, just a beautiful personality, confidence, and, um, you know, just uh, people who are, who are trusting, right? You ask the models to trust you, um, to, to make them shine in their best way. And so the selection process for the Naha Awards was, you know, was strong. The photographer and I met uh, quite frequently to discuss the project and make sure we had the right girls. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's so exciting. It is exciting, yes. you know, and, and yeah, it's, it's really great. 
So in competition wise, the Nahas, what um, what are you looking to get out of the Naha competition? Well, you know what, honestly, like I said, the experience so far has been really great and uh, I, I want to go to Vegas and just really enjoy it. Just soak it all in. I've heard wonderful things about the Naha Awards and I've never been so... Uh, I just want to like open myself up to everything that's there. I'd love to do the show um, and see all the booths and vendors and um, then go to the gala and, and just really soak it in and meet some other artists. I'm really hoping that I can track down a few uh, my favorite artists because their collections are really speaking to me and I just want to like talk to them and I've already engaged some of them online which is really great and um, yeah, I just can't wait. Perfect. Ginger Jennifer Rowland giving you hard eyes right now. Oh, hi. Really? hi. Yes. Perfect. Loving it. <laughs> so, do you have a favorite thing in hair? Do you have a least favorite thing in hair? Oh my. Um, I guess I could say I'm a little moody. Like some days I love one thing and some days I love the other. Like I think I'm all over the map. I think at the end of the day, like I love color and I think you can tell by looking at my Instagram page or my Facebook that I really love um, color theory, color play and um, I like to surprise people with color clash or, you know, I just, I, I love it all but, um, you know, just from all of my years, I think I really just love playing with color too. That's but I like to get my hands dirty and, you know, just see what I can make. Yeah, that's so exciting. Yeah, but I, I love all elements of this industry, but like I said, I'm a little moody, so it depends on the day. <laughs> Aren't we all? Yeah. You know, I think that comes with the creative uh, creative side in you. That's right. So what about someone new in the industry? What would you have advice for them? Like just starting. Oh man, just work your ass off. Yeah. Work hard. You know, enjoy the victories and also enjoy, you know, I don't even want to call them failures because they're not. Just enjoy understanding when, when you need to learn something. That's the most important thing. It's like, you know, I've attempted so many things that haven't worked out for me, but they really have because it is true what they say. My brain will work so much harder when I haven't done something I really wanted to do. My brain will figure out how to do it. And so when you're entering you just keep going and you know you pay attention to your mentors and what they're up to and be brave and ask them questions or you know just give yourself the, the pleasure of of like engulfing all the information you know go for it and um don't be shy yes yeah and so in that competition life what was that like starting out and um, what are some things you can say about even like um, working on stage, like doing some of the more timed competitions? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> wow, those are intense. Yeah, they're definitely intense to, to create work in a, in a time constraint asks a lot of you because not only are you trying to show up for design, but you're trying to be technically perfect in a very small amount of time. So the training leading up to it is, is really wild. And at the peak of, of you know, one, of my, one of my highlights, um, was representing Canada at the World Championships for Ladies Cut and Color, where, you know, we are on a world stage with, you know, a lot of countries up there represented, and uh, my first time up there, I mean, I, I was sweating, and I was talking to myself, and the guy next to me, I think it was China, like, <laughs> China was cutting next to me, and I'm like, go buddy, go buddy, yo, yeah, you can do this buddy, like, really yelling at myself to get it done, because, there's just that kind of extra kick that you need to, to execute and you need to be your biggest cheerleader um, because you are on the floor alone and you need to like, you need to be everything for yourself in order to, uh, to do your best work. Um, yeah, the competition life is, is, a, is, a, is an awesome life and uh, I'm, I'm so glad I'm a part of it. I love, I love how it feeds me in all other areas uh, of, of what I do behind the chair and my life too. I've met some wonderful people and I'm sure I'm gonna meet so many more. Cora Whiteford just uh, signed in oh, watching. Hey Cora, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cora's cool. I, I'm, uh, I always get your notes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So what about, a um, little bit about taking time to get to 
kind of this spot, you know, where sometimes you have to go through hurdles and like we said, um, how do you push through and... Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Uh, there are definitely like, uh, like things, you know, go high and then they balance out and I think downtime is really important. Um, I'm guilty of not really taking enough downtime in between some of my work. Like I feel like I have been working you know, pretty constantly for the last couple of years and am reminded by people to actually rest. And um, yeah, that's important um, because being creative takes a lot out of you. And you know, as a full-time hairstylist and then, you know, creating on the side as well, that can occupy a lot of time. So I remind myself to, to relax in downtime. I have signs at home that say, you know, take 10 you know, chill out, and um, that's cool, it keeps me where I need to be, and then also I love to, uh, I love to like, you know, meditate, do some dancing, do yoga, you know, just give myself some gifts every now and then to, uh, to be kind to myself so I can do the work that I do. Yes, that's perfect, yeah, little man. outlets in different, uh, outlets, different yeah. ways. Mm. So yeah, this is a, so, yeah. this is super exciting. I've also never done one of these lives I behind the camera over here. Really? So <laughs> you're doing so well. well we've had like a list of questions on the wall, and like she's been good at going through. <laughs> I'm trying. Janice Marie is cheering you on. Yeah, so yeah. thanks, girl. Yay. Thanks. Um, really, you know, this is just an awesome experience. I just wanted to introduce myself and and you know. Um, show off like some some cool work. I'll post pictures of this look um, online after the interview. So hopefully I can post it on the Hair Nerds page and also on my Facebook page and my Instagram. And um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Well, I want to go back to your Nahas for a minute. Okay. What brought the, that specific inspiration on? Did you? You know, see it in a form. Did you? Like did it just? Collection? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I saw a couple of things. I really did. I think one of the things that I was really influenced about with um, my collection, I think it was. Uh, I'm trying to remember the date, but it was a collection that Prada did, uh, I believe, in 2014, and that inspiration has still stood with me. They did a collection of face coats. They were like um, fun fur, or I don't. I think they were fun fur, fun fur face coats, and they had all this imagery on them. And I thought, yeah, how awesome is that? You know, these three-dimensional reliefed coats that you know were so vibrant and had so much to say and had so much expression on them. So I, I was really inspired by that. So I've always um, included that kind of um, an idea in my work, and really, it really spoke to me. Um, and I wanted to see if I could use hair in, in a medium that would, you know, um, complement that idea. And then, um, as far as like the wrap over the face, um, the white look with the afro with the wrap over the face, I just really wanted to attempt that. I saw, I saw a look that, you know, a piece of art that had some kind of sculpture like that too, and, and I wanted to put my own spin on it. Um, and so there have been things that definitely have inspired me, but. Really, I just wanted to kind of surprise my viewer and I wanted them to, you know, uh, kind of be like hypnotized by what I did. I think when you look at the photos, you really have to look twice and kind of dig into the photo to understand, um, you know, the technique and, and what was, what's happening there and what I'm trying to convey. Perfect. Yeah, I was definitely inspired by that. I'm very funky, yeah. different. I think yeah. you did definitely bring something also, different. Like, also, see, if you look at my collection, there's, there's one photo that stands out, like the one with the afro and the face wrap. Like, it's not, it doesn't have the same background as the other two. Um, and, you know, I kind of did that intentionally. I did that because um, uh, I feel like it... It's nice to have something unexpected also for the viewer. It's nice to have a little, you know, just a little nugget that, um, you know, makes you stand out, pops out a little bit, you know. I like, I like all those, those three photos together. I think they, you know, they send a strong message and, and I, I like that, you know, that one photo just a little askew. So, you know, I don't know, I dug it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um... I'm really excited to see what this is uh, this is going to look like here. So 
encourage everyone to go and check it out on the Facebook and on the Instagram. Absolutely. We should have the finished product up in about an hour. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in and getting yes. to know me and yes. meet me today. Uh, if you see me in Vegas and recognize me and you want to say hi, just come up and say hi. I would love that. Um, can't wait to see you all there. And feel free to shoot me any questions you might have uh, on Messenger anytime. And I'll do my best to get back to you and uh, say hi. Perfect. Well, Jag, I just want to say thank you so much for including me in this. I... Um, I am personally so inspired by everything that you do. Oh, thank you. And um, yeah, just keep keep doing you because you're doing an amazing job at that. So, Thanks so much. Yes. Bye, you guys. Thanks, everyone.